All right, guys, so before we move forwards with the programming, we should really understand all the bits and pieces that make up this Arduino board, like where the digital I.O., where the analog I.O., what are the two voltages that are available on this board? How do I reset the board by either pressing a button or having a signal going into one of those pins here? So, and what are, like, what are the two different power sources that I can have to power this guy up? Let's take a look at uh, this PowerPoint here, and I'm just gonna rock through all the different components on the board. And then once we have a good understanding of all the, the hardware, then when we start to do the software and the programming, then you'll understand what different things that I'm talking about when I reference different terminals on the board here. And if I hadn't said this before, this is an awesome step uh, towards programmable logic controllers, PLCs. You have digital I.O., you have analog I.O., um, you have the programming environment that's very similar to uh, some of the PLCs. You will learn about um, like local variables and global variables. You'll learn about bits and bytes and words, like all the different terminology that you'd use uh, with programmable logic controllers. So this is a great stepping stone to, uh, to understanding PLCs. Um, so I'm hoping that either at the end of my playlist or the end of somebody else's playlist that you've gone through, uh, that you've got a good understanding of the hardware and of the programming. And then when you step into PLCs, that this will really help you out um, going forwards. But let's, uh, let's look at uh, each of the different components here on the screen. So let's start off with the, um, with the two power supplies. So obviously there's a USB connector on the board. Um, when you connect up your USB, you're supposed to get five volts from your computer. Uh, you will find that some days it is 5 volts. You'll see that some days it's 4.86, some days it's 4.92. Um, it really depends on your USB as to exactly what voltage you're going to get out. Uh, that 5 volts will be available right here and right here. So between the 5 volts and the ground. Can you guys see my mouse? Yeah. So between the 5 volts and the ground, you'll be able to see that, uh, that voltage. But again, it will vary a little bit uh, depending on the USB. Okay. Then we have... Um, and also to note is that once you've downloaded your program to the, your Arduino, the program is on there. So you could also use an external power pack and then connect the USB from your power pack up to the board. Um, and then it will power whatever circuit that you have connected in there. But usually we have this connected up to the computer. The computer is able to, to upload the program to the Arduino and provides the five volt for all of our programs. Okay, below we also have the external power supply. Um, that's 7 to 12 volts. So that's normally for, you'll see in, if you're using that Elego kit or any of the starter kits, you'll have the 9 volt uh, power supply uh, and then it will have this connector right here. So that way, again, you could drop in your program and then use a 9 volt battery in order to, uh, to power it up. Just keep in mind, again, I think I mentioned this in the, the unboxing, uh, the 9 volt uh, supply is good for something if you're controlling like an LED uh, something like that, but don't use it for the servo motors or the DC motor or anything like that. You'll smoke the uh, the battery within a couple minutes. Okay, so uh, we have the USB connector and we have the 7 to 12 volt external power supply there. Okay, everything is being controlled by the Atmega 328 chip. I think I was reading the other day that this thing can do like, like millions of operations per second. Uh, so that is the brains of the operation that controls everything on the Arduino board there. Up above, we have the, the digital I.O. And you'll notice that I have digital I.O. terminals uh, 2 through 13. So you don't usually make use of pin 0 and 1. Um, they're being used for tran like transmitting and receiving of information. You can make, make use of this, I think, for like serial communications or something like that. So usually if you're going to make use of a pin, a digital pin, you're going to make use of pins 2 through 13 there. And we noticed that on the previous video that pin 13 has an integral LED that's connected up to it. So by digital, that means uh, basically on or off. So it's looking for either 5 volts or 0 volts, that something is either true or not true. The signal is there or it's not there. So it's not an analog signal. These are just digital signals being either on or off. Uh, they're obviously good for 5 volts because we're using that as a, as a power source here. Uh, but the maximum you can have going into those input terminals is uh, 40 milliamps. So I can't think of any ap application where you're putting more than that. Um, but just keep in mind that there's a, a finite amount of current that uh, each of those terminals can make use of. So pins 2 through 13 are the, the digital I.O. Okay, down below we have uh, the analog I.O. 
So these guys will take a zero to five volt signal. So anywhere between zero to five volts will go into there. Um, and that will be changed to, I think it's between zero to 1,023. So we'll see on, on uh, the next uh, videos that we'll look at uh, the analog read function. And those analog uh, terminals, we can actually um, look at a varying zero to five volt signal. So some of the, the sensors will be using, or a lot of sensors will be using uh, a zero to five volt signal that's analog and changing. Um, and we'll also be making use of like a potentiometer that will vary our uh, USB five volts from zero to five going into these terminals. So anytime you have a varying voltage in, then we'll be making use of the analog terminals down here. Okay. Uh, also to note is that the digital I/O, like they're inputs, right? But they're also um, they're also outputs. Um, so I miss I misspoke there in that the forty milliamps. Uh, is also there for the output because you can determine, remember we said in the previous video, you can determine whether these guys are either an input or an output. Um, so just keep in mind that the 40 milliamps is good for the LEDs, uh, but you're not going to be using these digital I.O. to control like the servo motor or the DC motor. We're going to have a, a separate power supply. We're going to make use of, uh, of this guy uh, in subsequent videos for the motor controls. Uh, because coming off of these terminals right here, you'll probably smoke the terminals if you're doing any of the motor controls. So hopefully I'm, I'm a little bit more clear on these in that they can be inputs or outputs. Uh, and if you were using them as an output, it's fine to use them for the LED portions, but don't connect up the motors directly to the Arduino outputs here. Okay, and then we have uh, the serial in and the serial out on zero and one. So again, we're gonna make use of probably pins two through 13 for all of our projects. Okay, then we have the, the digital ground. It's available right here and it's available down here as well. So there's three different points that you can pick up uh, your ground. Okay, uh, there may be some points where we look at uh, an analog reference voltage. So we'd be making use of this pin right here. And again, they're hard to make out, especially if you're my age um, and your eyes are starting to go. Um, so just make sure you're going into the appropriate uh, terminal as you're connecting everything up there. Okay, so we have digital ground available here and down here. Um, that's kind of like our return for all of our circuits. And there may be, at some point, we may need to, may need to make use of the analog reference voltage there. Okay, I mentioned that uh, you can reset your program uh, by either pressing a push button or by um, or by going into this pin right here. And I believe if you set this reset pin low, if you set it to zero volts, then it will reset the uh, the your program there. The other way to reset uh, your program is with um, is with this reset push button up here. So you can press this push button. It will reset the the program and start right from fresh at the beginning of the loop there. Okay. On the bottom here, there's two different voltages that are available. So we already mentioned the five volts that's available uh, from the USB, and that's the one that we're mostly gonna be using, but there's also a 3.3 volt uh, connection there. So um, at some point, like an example would be, um, we may be using like something like this, uh, an RTD. So an RTD is just a, a temperature sensor, so it has a temperature probe, uh, and that connects up to, um, and an Arduino, in this case, this is just focused. No, not focusing. This is just the, uh, the transmitter for that RTD for Matterfruit. Uh, and this guy will run off of either three volts, sorry, 3.3 volts or five volts. Sometimes uh, when you're hooking something like this up, um, the five volts just isn't working for some reason because it's, it's varying a little bit. So you may find that for certain uh, sensors, you, can, you may have to make use of the 3.3 volts in order to get, in this case, off of this RTD amplifier to get the appropriate uh, temperature reading off of it. The 3.3 volts comes off a voltage regulator, and so it is a gorgeous 3.3 volts that stays steady all the time. So there are two voltages available on this board, five volts, which we're gonna make use of for most of our projects, uh, but there also is the 3.3 that we may make use of for some of the temperature sensors um, going forwards. Okay, and we mentioned this before that there's a ground terminal below there. Uh, and so this guy up here 
and these guys down here, they're all connected into the same point. So you can use the, any of those three as the return. Okay, uh, there's a voltage in voltage pin in voltage in pin terminal here uh, that will take uh, seven to twelve volts as well. We maybe make use making use of that guy as well. So, and then we also mentioned the uh, the LED pin. Uh, 13 that is integral to this one right here. So you can connect up an external LED to pin 13, or as we saw with the uh, the Blink program, this LED can be make, made use of if you just want to quickly connect something up um, and control the LED with the Arduino IDE. Okay, do I have anything else that's there? The reset button that we mentioned uh, before, and that's basically it. Um, over here, um, there are some connections for um, for serial connections as well. Uh, I, I haven't made use of these guys whatsoever, but there are six different terminals here that you can make use of for uh, serial connections on this board. So hopefully this clears up all the different bits and pieces on the board. Um, you know, in my videos, I usually mention things uh, two or three times, so we'll just rock through one more time. One power supply here for the five volts, one external power supply for basically your nine volt battery, then we have our digital I.O. up here, so inputs and outputs. We decide if it's an input or an output within the Arduino IDE. We have analog inputs, so we're looking at 0 to 5 volts in that's being changed to 1,023, and you'll see that in subsequent uh, videos. Everything's being controlled by the AppMega uh, chip here. We have a number of grounds or returns, so here, here, and here. And we have two different voltages that are available, the 5 volts and the 3.3. You can re also reset it with setting this reset pin to a zero. Uh, and at some point, we may be making use of this analog reference uh, right here, but that's few and far between. All right, guys, so now that we know the uh, all our hardware here, then any time that I start talking about the digital I.O. or the analog, analog I.O., then hopefully you'll understand what I'm talking about. All right, guys, um, on my list of things that I have uh, for the next one, um, I'm going to go through like Arduino resources. So like um, different uh, YouTube channels that are really good, different books that are good, uh, stuff that I've found that have helped me to understand the Arduino. So the next video will be all the different types of Arduino resources that I've been able to find. And then we'll leave it to the comment section for you guys to tell me other resources that you found that are good as well. Uh, if you found this video to be good, then give us a like and uh, Comment below and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks very much for your patience, guys. We'll talk to you soon.